great. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the C++ 11 library for random number generation. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, basically, this, this is what Inbal said earlier. You can find my uh, content info here if you want to get in touch. Um, so why do we care? First of all, uh, the reason I, I am doing this talk is uh, because it and my work, uh, I wanted uh, my team to uh, move to build with the C++ 17. We were at C++ 11 at that time. And uh, as part of uh, trying to convince my manager I promised him to uh, that I will do uh, an internal C++ course for uh, for the team, uh, teaching them about modern C++. So we have uh, a biweekly meeting where I present each time uh, some topic about <clears throat> C++ uh, from 11 onwards, and uh, it took us about uh, 15 meetings just to get through C++ 11, which we just uh, last week uh, finished. Uh, and part of that was also uh, talking about the random number uh, generation library, which uh, I knew um, on the surface, but uh, when I got to dig in deep, I saw the beauty uh, that's hidden inside this library and I wanted to share it with you. So, and uh, this uh, slide talks more about why do uh, people in general care about generating random numbers. So it comes uh, in many fields. You can see some of them here. And I guess every one of us uh, needed to generate random numbers at some point or the other. So what did we have before C++ 11? We had the STD RAND from C. Um, there's the S RAND, which you use to seed the random number generation engine. And then you can call run to get a number between zero and some maximal value. And usually uh, you use some uh, uh, module to shrink that into some predefined range. So it works, but there are some problems with it. First, uh, if you, the, the general ad advice is to seed the, the engine with the time, but SED time is in seconds, which is not so good uh, granularity. Think for example, if you spawn several applications in some grid, then uh, many of them will probably start in the same second and all of them will get the same seed and you won't get much uh, difference between, or any difference between them. Second, the distribution is not uniform because uh, of the use of uh, module, modulo, um, the, the lower numbers are uh, apparently more um, highly, there's more chance to, to get them um, relative to the to the higher higher numbers so uh, it's not uniform and i told you that rand returns uh, between 0 and this uh, predefined rand max which is not so high uh, apparently uh, the the standard says that rand max should be uh, at minimum 32000 and something and uh, it can be higher, but actually there are um, implementation which set it only to 32,000. So 
You won't get any number higher than that, no matter what you do, which is uh, insufficient to several applications. And it, it is not guaranteed to be thread safe. So if you call it from several threads, it might uh, crash or have undefined behavior. So C++11 introduced a new random gen uh, number generation library. And in this library, there are three main concepts which are used to generate random numbers. So usually we start with some uh, predefined seed, which we then feed to a random number engine. This engine is basically some simple state machine, which uh, holds some state and um, change the state with some predefined function on each generation of a random number. And then uh, those numbers are, are feeded to uh, a random number distribution to uh, get them in some uh, predefined range or some shape which you uh, want to get for your application. And we'll see it in detail later on. And here is uh, the first example of using this random uh, library to ro uh, we simulate rolling a dice. And uh, so we set the seed, feed it to a default random engine, uh, which is some, uh, some default that the library has set for us. Then we use a distribution to define that we want uh, integral numbers between one and six. And finally, we call the distribution with the engine to get the result. Okay, so just a minute. Okay. So an engine's role is to return random bits. The, and that means that the likelihood of getting of getting a, a zero or a one on the next bit is uh, equal. There's the same probability to get a zero or a one. Now, uh, usually you don't get a single bit because you don't uh, want, for performance reasons, you want uh, to get more bits at once. And, uh, and so the result of, of the engine is some uh, unsigned integral type, which holds many bits. And how do we use those engines? So again, we'll start with the default random engine. We can get, uh, each engine has a min and a max, which we can query. Uh, a nice thing that uh, with that the random library has is uh, serialization. You can uh, serialize uh, an engine to some uh, stream, which uh, basically saves its state to the stream. Then you can, uh, on line nine, we, um, we run the engine to get some random number. We can uh, reseed the engine whenever, uh, whenever we want. We can tell the engine, the engine to discard the next 10 results. And then we can uh, re, uh, read the engine again from the stream to restore the state that we had uh, before. So uh, N1 and N2. And and, and N2 here must be equal because they both were generated after uh, having the same state. Okay. All right. So uh, we saw the default random engine, but uh, this is merely a type def to some uh, engine of the 
list of engines uh, that the library has. And uh, let's uh, go up over them. So the most basic one is the LCG linear congressional generator, which use this, uses this basic uh, modular formula to generate uh, the next number. And uh, this is how the type looks like. But uh, of course you won't get very good uh, random uh, sequences for any combination of the parameters A, C, and M. So there are several known good uh, numbers which you can uh, set and uh, which will give you uh, good random sequences. And the library uh, predefines those aliases for us, main std run zero and main std run with uh, numbers that are will give us good results. I have a question. Yeah. What's uh, you in fast 32 T? What is what again? Ah, the fast, first, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the, the fastest int, uh, which is uh, at least 32 bits. Uh, basically, it will be an unsigned int, but, uh, or, or u in 32, uh, but many there are uh, platforms with, where uh, it's faster to do 64 bits and not 32. So it will, there it will be uh, u in 64. Uh, the next engine is uh, subtract with carry. Uh, again, you can see the formula zero won't uh, go uh, too much uh, deeper here. Uh, and again, you have you can basically have the the base template, which you can uh, use any numbers you want. But again, the library gives us the um, the aliases to, to, to known good uh, parameters. Okay, the, these are the run lux uh, engines. And uh, finally, we have the Mercent Twister engine. This is uh, arguably the, the most uh, famous one. Uh, it's uh, formula is uh, pretty pretty complicated, um, but um, yeah, this is a continuation of the formula. And as, as you can see, it has many, many uh, parameters, um, about uh, 10 or so. And uh, those are, these are the, the known uh, good uh, parameters, MT19937, uh, and uh, it has a, a 32 and a 64 uh, versions, bit versions. Uh, the reason for the name is that uh, the, the period of the engine, the period of an engine is the, the, the size of the random sequence it generates before it starts repeating itself. So uh, here the, the sequence will be uh, two to the power of 1900 and 19, uh, 19,000 and 1937. So it has a giant uh, sequence before it starts uh, repeating itself. So these, these were the, the predefined engines. Sorry? I think it means it will never repeat itself in any one, in any universe. Yeah. Like <laughs> Correct. Um, and uh, so those are the basic engines. We also have engine adapters, which are uh, can wrap some engine and um, transform it in a certain way, uh, which is uh, designed to increase its uh, 
entropy. And those uh, adapters are a discard block engine, which uh, out of uh, every P numbers discards the, or keeps only the first R and discards the rest. Uh, it, it has been shown in, in research the, uh, that it can increase uh, or, or make better random numbers. And again, there are predefined uh, engines which uh, use use this adapter to get uh, to get new engines with better randomness. And the shuffle order engine, which uh, shuffles each uh, block of k uh, numbers out of its uh, input engine. And this too uh, has a predefined uh, alias in the standard. Uh, finally, the, the last uh, adapter is independent bits engine. And this one is, uh, can be used to get uh, a result with a different number of bits than the or, uh, original engine. So you can see this, the, the W here is basically the width of uh, the, the, the number of random bits uh, you need for your uh, application. So for example, if you your uh, source engine was a 32 bit and you need 40 bits, then this adapter will call the original engine uh, um, for a number of times until it has sufficient uh, random bits. Okay. So we have many uh, engines defined in the library. What should we use? So uh, this table tries to uh, give you the, the trade-offs basically of of how to choose a random engine. And uh, so each engine has a different uh, uh, state size, which it uh, needs to, to keep. So if you uh, plan to create many of them, maybe you, you want a smaller engine. Uh, some are faster than others, and some uh, pr have uh, a better uh, statistical properties of, of the engine they have. The, usually the, the go-to engine is the Mercent Twister engine, uh, which as we saw has uh, this uh, gigantic um, period and uh, is also quite fast. So we talked about engines. The, uh, usually we won't use an engine uh, alone. We will feed the engine to some distribution uh, to get some uh, to get a context for our uh, our random numbers. So, what can we do with a distribution? Similarly to engine, it is default constructed. It has a min and a max. And again, we can uh, serialize and deserialize it to a stream. And to use it, we uh, invoke the call operator, as you can see on line 12, uh, with an engine. And then it will get a number from the engine, adjust it to the required distribution, and give it back to us. Okay, there's a question in the chat if you wanna. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking at the chat, but. Uh, yeah, I can I can read it. Uh, does the shuffle engine use randomness to choose how to shuffle? Uh, what is the randomness source of the shuffle? Of, of the shuffle engine. Yeah, I guess it is the, the source engine itself. Uh, this is a good question. I'm not 100% sure about it, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think it, it just calls the, the source engine once more. Uh, Thank you. 
Okay. So um, each distribution has a set of uh, parameters. Um, and uh, we can, uh, the parameters basically are uh, what we what will be fitted to the distribution constructor. We can also uh, there's the this nested type type uh, called the param type, um, and we can also uh, query the the parameters of of the distribution. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure this is this stuff is too useful. Not remember why I put this slide even. So <laughs> let's move on. Okay, so uh, there is no uh, predefined default um, random engine. So uh, let's go. But but there are many uh, there are many uh, defined there are many uh, distributions in the in the library. Uh, so let's see what we have. So the most basic ones are uh, the uniform distributions. This, these are the distributions you, you'll usually encounter in code examples. And uh, they're uniform because uh, the results that will, they will give you, each one has the same probability to be chosen as each of the, each of the others. Um, the man in the picture is uh, Giovanni Cardano, which was one of the fathers of uh, probability theory. So uh, the first uniform distribution is uh, the integral uniform di uh, distribution. Uh, you you give it so the parameters here are A and B, which are the um, the define the range of uh, of results you want to get. And in this range, each number, each integral number has the same uh, probability to, to be uh, generated. So uh, for example, uh, examples in which you would use these this, this, uh, distributions are, uh, as we saw, uh, generating the fair dice or uh, picking a card off out of a deck, um, etc. Similarly, there's a floating point uniform distribution, and again, you define uh, A and B to uh, to define some, some interval, and uh, then you can get each floating point number in this interval with uh, with the same probability. So, as I said, here you can see uh, all the slides with uh, all the distributions. So uh, you can come down on what go uh, on uh, each distribution uh, now, but uh, for anyone who's interested, you can take a look at the, oh, sorry, I thought you saw what I see. Okay, now you, now you do. Um, so these are all the distributions. Again, for anyone's interested, you can, uh, I will publish the, the slides and you can uh, take a look at, at all the, on all the distributions um, later on. But uh, I will just uh, go over, there are several families of distributions I will uh, describe shortly each uh, family. So uh, we saw the uniform family and now we have the Bernoulli distributions named after uh, the Swiss mathematician, uh, Jacob Bernoulli. And uh, these distributions are um, describing uh, processes where uh, oh, we have some, uh, what's called trials, which are basically um, some some process which can produce uh, a true or false or a success 
or a fail. Uh, for example, uh, flipping a coin, right? You, you have a, a head or a tail. And, uh, and uh, in practice, oh, well, what uh, these distributions are used for is, um, uh, for example, uh, some unreliable mechanical component that can fail uh, randomly uh, at use and uh, the, the chains of failure uh, should not change uh, over time. I mean, the, the, the chance of failure is constant and you want to uh, simulate the point in which it will fail. The next family is uh, the Poisson distributions after the French mathematician Simon Poisson. Um, and so uh, these distributions are for uh, random processes where uh, for a sequence of events, which are independent of uh, one another. And uh, the, the probability of, of, an, of an event occurring is, uh, is fixed. Uh, for example, think about a call center, which uh, the probability of uh, a call entering the, the center is the same throughout uh, some uh, interval. Uh, the next family is the normal distributions. Uh, the normal distribution, which is also called uh, the Gaussian distribution uh, after uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss or uh, the bell curve uh, sometimes. Uh, th this distribution is um, sh shown uh, as the name suggests, it's uh, quite uh, But natural, um, and usually uh, it is uh, it is used for simulating again some some measurements, which uh, can uh, have some uh, measurement error in them. And the last family is uh, called sampling distributions. Uh, here I put uh, the, the picture of uh, Augustin Cauchy, um, the French ma mathematician, which also has a distribution uh, to his name. Uh, and this, uh, th those distributions uh, can help you uh, generate, uh, basically generate your own distribution out of a list of samples. Uh, let's see uh, an example. So the discrete distribution, basically uh, you give the probability uh, for each sample between uh, in, in, inside uh, some range, and then it will uh, generate you the, 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 the appropriate uh, distribution basically. And similarly for floating points, you have uh, the piecewise constant and the piecewise uh, linear distributions. So uh, here you, you actually uh, generate the distribution according to some, uh, some curve. Okay, so uh, those were the distributions. And here is a, an, a, an example uh, of comparing some of the distributions. Let's try to run it. Okay, so you'll see here, you can see the compiler controller, right? Okay. Nice. So uh, you can see uh, we generated the normal uh, distribution uniform, which is appropriately, um, approximately uh, a, flat cur a flat line the binomial distribution and some distribution called Fisher F. 
So uh, again, anyone's interested, you can take a look at the example uh, later. Uh, this example is also in uh, CPP, CPP reference, actually. Okay. Uh, there is also a, a utility function called uh, generate canonical, which uh, basically it's a building block for other distributions. Uh, the, uh, it, it generates a, uniformly a random a floating point number between zero and one. And uh, here you can see this is from the implementation of a uniform real distribution uh, where they're basically called the uh, generate canonical um, and adjust it to the appropriate uh, range. So if you want to implement your own distribution, uh, this is a useful utility to, to know of. I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, if I can. Uh, it's <clears throat> so I was wondering, like, so the the IEEE standard representation of floating point basically it's built out of uh, um, a series. Um, how do you exponent and mantissa? Yeah, exactly. And I was wondering. So do, do you know if like, so the uniform floating point distribution, is there some kind of, is it a different representation or does this still hold? Like if it's a floating point then basically probably wouldn't be able to get, like in general, clearly you wouldn't be able to get all the numbers because of the limitations, but like technical. Yeah, of course you want, you would only get the representable uh, representable numbers, right? And, and whatever like, uh, type you you define there. Yeah. So, so, like, what I'm asking if there's like additional, like, if this is the standard, yeah. If, if this is the this implementation, or is there something else, the different, some kind of a different, uh, more complex implementation of floating point behind the scene to achieve the whole range? No. If, it uses a uh, float and double uh, the regular representations. Okay, thank you. All right. So uh, we talked about uh, the engine and the distribution. And as you recall the, from uh, the start of the talk, uh, usually we started with some uh, seed. So if you uh, want real uh, randomicity, you you need to define some, uh, to start with some real uh, random uh, origin because uh, all the other uh, components are uh, only are, uh, only pseudo random. And, uh, and if you give it the same seed, it, it will generate the same uh, numbers basically. So how do we get uh, true randomness? For that, we have STD random device. Um, and uh, again, you can query uh, the minimum and maximum. Uh, it has some uh, member function called entropy, which is supposed to tell you how random is random device, but uh, many platforms uh, don't uh, implement it. So usually you shouldn't count on it. And uh, and to use it, you call you call it with, uh, with the function call operator. And uh, usually behind the scenes, it is implemented with some uh, platform dependent um, mechanism. Uh, for example, uh, in Unix, you have uh, the dev random device and uh, you can also, um, you can also uh, give the, the the device you want for for generating the randomness uh, explicitly to the constructor, as you can see on the first line here. Uh, but of course, this is a uh, platform dependent. So on each platform, you would have uh, different uh, strings which you can feed to the to the random device constructor.
So uh, how do you use it uh, for seeding? Uh, so basically you call it and transfer the result to the constructor of the random number generator you choose. Um, but uh, as you recall, the so the, the random device will only give you a 32-bit uh, number. And uh, as you recall, the Mersenne Twister engine has uh, its state size is 624 bytes. So uh, you can't fill um, the, all the bytes with just a 32-bit uh, number, meaning that um, the, the bytes will be filled, but uh, it will only have uh, entropy of 32 bits. So all, you won't get all the possible uh, initial states you can have with Mersenne Twister. And uh, to solve this problem, uh, the standard has the seed sec uh, uh, type. So uh, for the 6A type, you give it some list of numbers, and then it can generate uh, a sequence of random numbers out of this uh, given input. And so the you can feed this uh, set sick to seed sec, sorry to the constructor of uh, of the engine, and then instead of uh, calling the random device only once, you can call it two or more times uh, to get a better uh, random seed. So basically, if you really wanted uh, six, six, 624 bytes of random, you would call, you need to call it, uh, I don't know, 100 times or so. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I have a question, Dvir. How are you first? Hey, I'll see. Thanks. Hey. Um, do you have any uh, day life example that you use this uh, mechanism? Something maybe in your work or something that you did for fun, if you have uh, an example, because this is basically very theoretical uh, presentation, which is good, which is very good. But I'd like to have some uh, physical example to get a better understanding of how to use it. Yeah, I'm, I, actually, I'm not uh, using it uh, under the entire range of, of things I showed you here. Basically, I just used the, the, the example we saw at first with the uh, uh, dice to, to generate some mm -hmm. integral number in some range uh, for tests, basically. Uh, so this is the, the most uh, uh, real life example that I uh, have. Um, and you actually see that this the simulator, the tester that you built is actually giving you good uh, random numbers, good random uh, behavior? Yeah, this is guaranteed by the standard. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Um, by the way, in my uh, work, we sometimes for unit tests and stuff, we generate random uh, you know, pieces of data and, and feed them to our algorithms. And then many times we want uh, you know, some properties like some average and standard deviation. And that's where the Gaussian and normal distributions can become mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. Good, thank you. Um, all right, I'll skip this slide. Uh, so along with the engines and distributions uh, that we saw, C++ uh, also has uh, algorithms for uh, using uh, random engines. And the two algorithms are uh, shuffle, uh, which was introduced in C++11 and sample introduced in C++17. Um, so shuffle replaced an older algorithm, which was called random shuffle and used the std rand and it, it shuffles uh, the input sequence. 
and sample uh, chooses uh, some predefined uh, number of elements out of the sequence and writes them to an output iterator. And they do it, do it using uh, the random engine fit, uh, fitted to them. Skip that as well. Okay, so uh, despite uh, the rich interface and uh, great modularity, uh, there are still some pain points uh, in the random the number generation library. Um, and here is a great quote from uh, Melissa O'Neill, which is uh, um, she has uh, worked, uh, she has several proposals regarding uh, how to improve random and uh, she even has her own uh, library uh, of uh, random number engines. And the quote says, uh, to the extent that anyone cares about C++ 11 random number facility at all, the C++ community is polarized between, between two views. One, it's amazing, amazingly elegant, a shining example of separation of concerns with a pluggable and accessible architecture that's comprehensive and flexible, but it's horrible to use, it's unnecessarily over-engineered, it's completely unsuitable for beginners and even seasoned programmers hate it, and both camps are right. So uh, the, mo the mo modularity is actually great. You can define your own uh, engines uh, as um, uh, the library of, uh, by Melissa does and feed them to the pre-exist uh, distributions and vice versa. But uh, for the simple use cases, it's uh, too complicated. And here is an example. Uh, when we used std rand, it was very simple. We just called std rand and got a number. And uh, for the most basic use of, uh, of uh, the C++ 11 library, we need to define an engine. We need to define the distribution uh, and then uh, and only then uh, call it. No, oh, but, but on the C++, uh, before C++ 11, you, forgot you need to see to do this S round, it's just outside of the scope of the function. You couldn't do it like you have in the example and get a random number. No, in this example as well, we don't see the, the, the engine. We use the default seed, but uh, yeah, of course, um, also the, the second version is, is better as we uh, explained than the first one, but the simplicity of usage was uh, gone with this process. So we would uh, we do like to uh, ret return the the simplicity back. Okay. Is the default seed taken from the default random device if there is such a thing, or is it just a fixed default seed if you don't provide? Uh, each one? engine has uh, doc some documented uh, predefined seed, uh, some number. Yeah. And by the way, I assume that. Uh, uh, when we upgrade the C++ language, the engines cannot change. It's part of like binary stability. And I wonder if well, it's the, the problem is not with the engine, it's with the inter interface. You mean if we can change the interface? Uh, no, I maybe mean, we I can add functions, uh, convenience functions, which is what some of the uh, proposals uh, Prepare. I think the, uh, this proposal. mechanism. So what I mean is, let's say someone figures out that the numbers on the percent twister aren't correct, and they want to change the standard and they make an, a new, better uh, percent twister. Is it uh, okay to use the same one, or is it like part of the binary compatibility of the language? If if they find uh, good num better numbers to feed to the template uh, parameters, there's no problem. We can add another uh, alias with the the new numbers. Uh, the the algorithm of the Mercent Twister itself probably uh, won't change, but uh, maybe we we do uh, want other engines, uh, which we don't have currently. So uh, there is this uh, proposal, which uh, adds uh, this overrun int, int uh, function 
to uh, the standard library, uh, which can get, generate some random number with a predefined uh, range. And it, uh, it has some uh, default uh, random seed, not a fixed one as, as uh, is currently. And you can reseed it if you want. And also uh, algorithms such as shuffle will be able to use uh, a default engine instead of uh, today you have to explicitly supply some engine. Uh, another approach is uh, having uh, an engine wrapper with convenience functions. Uh, so uh, this proposal uh, by uh, Tim Song and Melissa O'Neill uh, proposes such a, such a wrapper. Again, with uh, uniform will give you uh, like rand, uh, an, a uniform number between uh, a predefined range can be uh, either integral or uh, a floating point and also other uh, convenience functions like pick uh, one of, pretty, uh, of a given uh, list. Uh, now, another problem is, uh, as we described, to properly seed uh, Mercent Twister, for example, with a gigantic state. Uh, you need to use SIDSEC uh, and uh, hopefully call it, uh, call, uh, fit, fit it enough random uh, numbers uh, to have good uh, entropy. And this is an implementation of, of a function, uh, of a generic function, which can uh, seed any uh, random engine uh, with enough uh, entropy. Um, that it requires, and as you can see, uh, it it is pretty complex. So uh, maybe we could just feed the random device to the uh, engine and let it do all this uh, complicated work. And there are proposals uh, in this direction uh, already. Yeah, actually, it should have been. Uh, I shouldn't have called. Uh, random uh, the random device here, but just pass it on to the seed. And uh, there are more uh, proposals uh, right now in the in the committee uh, with uh, with more improvements. Um, if you are interested, uh, you can uh, check it uh, later on. Uh, the links are here in the slide. Okay, and uh, that's what I have today. Any more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Does the standard, and I think this is related to what we tried to ask, does the standard specify the exact operation of each algorithm in the sense that given the same seed, I will get the same sequence of numbers on different platforms, different compilers, and different versions or, or that kind of thing? Yeah, so uh, with the edges, uh, it does, uh, the standard does specify it, and it will be platform independent. Uh, distributions uh, don't have to be, uh, it, it can, can vary between uh, implementations. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, yes. 